Full Field Rundown Part 2. Your Preakness is my weakness. Trust the Profits is proud to be sponsored by Game of Silks. Go to silks.io to get in the game. Real ownership, real races, real rewards. Sure, bad cop. Hmm. Trust the Profits. It is the formula here. One more time to talk to you about Preakness. Well, what happened? Well, number one, I'm dining in Alfresco, so I apologize if there's some street noise around me. Um, I'm having myself a beer and a sandwich, outdoors style. And, um, yeah, I do want to talk about Preakness. Why? Well, a lot's gone on with the Preakness since we last spoke. I was going through possibles and probables, and now we've got morning line. Got a couple horses out that I was talking about. We've got another horse that's in that we didn't expect to be in. So there's a lot to discuss here, um, including, number one, check out SureBad Coffee, 20% off if you use the promo code TTP20 at your uh, at your SureBadCoffee.com website. That's right. They've got a lovely espresso um, right now that they are selling on their website. Go ahead and check that out. Use the promo code. Get 20% off. Bring that price down and uh, let them know you got some trust the profits love. Also... I mean, while we're on this page right here, let's talk about silks.io. Get involved in Game of Silks. Mint a horse. Who knows? You could have a Kentucky Derby winner. You could have a Preakness contestant here. The Silks purse for a Preakness winner, $21,000. Am I reading that right? That is insane. If you're alpha racing right now, you've got two horses, Muth and Seize the Gray. I mean, you've got to be looking at that $21,000 and uh, thinking about how you're going to be spending that money next. Congratulations if you're one of those owners. But regardless, we've got uh, nine horses here. Uh, six are owned by Silks owners. Congratulations to them. Fun times, fun times. Um, yeah, got uh, nine horses here. Got morning line odds on all of them. Got some interesting odds here. Muth getting eight to five. Imagination six to one. Didn't expect it to be that high. Uh, let's go ahead and, and get on with the story here. Starting with Mugatu, Sire Blofeld. Love the villainry there. 12 races, uh, one win, fifth place at Bluegrass after sitting in fifth most of the race. That's his, been his highest profile race so far. Eighth at the Rushaway Stakes after sitting there most of the race, not really improving a whole lot. Probably his best race so far, the Bataglia, where he finished in fourth behind Encino, seven lengths behind Encino in that one, uh, coming back from 10th. It's getting Joe Bravo as a, a jockey. I believe it's the first time Joe Bravo's been on Mugatu. Might love him if you love a deep closer. Uh, you might love him if you're uh, looking for the next rich strike. Personally, he is not on my list. Moving on, we have Uncle Heavy. Ooh, Uncle Heavy. Three wins in five races. He's done some good, and then he's, you know, he's, he's sort of faded away, fading away at the wood. Um, got a bad start, though, so we'll give him that. I shouldn't say he faded away. He did start in 10th, and then he improved to 5th. But again, he didn't finish in the money at the Wood. Other horses beat him, obviously. Uh, at the Withers, though, that has been the story of Uncle Heavy right there. It's the first place at the Withers where he started from 6th, uh, improved up to 3rd down the stretch, closing to win by a nose over El Grande O. Winner of your Withers. There you have it. Winner of the Wait for It Stakes as well, going a little bit over a mile beating notice of action by one and a quarter lengths in that one. Um, and before that, the Pennsylvania nur uh, nursery stakes fifth place there uh, got off to a rough start, uh, improved from dead last to fifth. So this is a horse that has some, some deep closing ability. And I do also want to mention here, I Ortiz getting them out here on uncle heavy. That's a, that's a bump up for uncle heavy. No disgrace to, uh, to Michael Sanchez, but I read Ortiz getting the mountain here. And Catching Freedom. Surprise, surprise, Catching Freedom. Weren't talking about him for, for a week after the Derby, and all of a sudden he gets entered in, Brad Cox, on two weeks rest, going against Brad Cox's M.O. Uncle had uh, Catching Freedom, fourth at the Kentucky Derby. He was in 16th place. Up to the mile mark, he started making a move for six, and then closed for fourth, uh, still behind obviously Mystic Dan in that race, uh, was first at the Louisiana Derby, same length as this race, nine and a half furlongs, overtaking track Phantom, holding off Honor Marie by one length in that one. Got third at the Risen Star, nine furlong race there. 
uh, losing to Sierra Leone by a little over one length. Sorry, a little under two lengths, I should say. That's probably closer to it. And then the winner, the Smarty Jones, by two lengths over Just Steel. Brad Cox, Flavian Pratt. Um, wow, hard to root. Hard to bet against Brad Cox and Flavian Pratt. But again, two weeks rest after going 10 furlongs uh, at the Kentucky Derby. Is that going to be a detriment to catching freedom? Muth. So story on Muth is this this race sets up perfectly for him, doesn't it? Um, he's on however many weeks rest since uh, since the Arkansas Derby. Four wins, two second places, lifetime in six races. Never finished worse than six. Safest horse to bet in this race, obviously. Did win the Arkansas Derby over Just Steel by two lengths in that one. Won the San Vicente. Uh, Vicente going seven furlongs in that one over Pilot Commander. Second place at the BC Juvenile. Losing to Fierceness. Fierceness not in this race. Fierceness, we're not even sure if he was in the Kentucky Derby, to be honest. Um, and then first place at the American Pharaoh Stakes over Wind Me Up. Um, I mean, what are the negatives on Muth? I don't really... Gosh, I don't have too many. Um, he hasn't won all his races, which, you know, it's, he's not justify. But, yeah, it feels like this race is setting up perfectly for him. Of the two Baffert horses, Muth seems like the safest bet. Um, yeah, there you have it. Mystic Dan. Surprise, surprise, Mystic Dan turning around from the Kentucky Derby where he won by a nose over Sierra Leone. Before that, he was third in the Arkansas Derby. But again, I'm going back to Kentucky Derby two weeks rest after winning. Didn't do wonders for Mage. Um, I wonder if this is the best spot for Mystic Dan. It seems like he'd be better off waiting for another race moving on. But Ken McPeak wants to give him a chance. Um, also first at the Southwest Stakes in muddy weather. So here's the thing about Mystic Dan. We know he likes a little bit of the mud, likes the slop. A little bit of an advantage for him there. So what happens if on Pimlico Day, on Preakness Day in Pimlico, sorry, uh, we get a little bit of rain, then all of a sudden things open up for Mystic Dan once again. Um, right now, I'm not super high on him. And it's mainly because of that two weeks rest, uh, whereas some of these horses are getting way more. But we'll see what happens. Um, Mystic Dan, I mean, obviously he did something the Kentucky Derby that a lot of us didn't expect. El Hombre, going to give him credit. El Hombre had him in his ticket. I did not. I said if, if, he's, if it's raining, if there's mud, use him. It was a little bit wet, but not wet enough for me to use him. Some of you used him out there. Congratulations. I'm very glad you did. Seize the gray. Alpha Racing's number two. <laughs> wow. Alpha Racing, well done. Winner, the Pat Day Mile. Also coming off two weeks rest, but only running a mile. Um, yeah, sitting close to the pace, closing down the stretch for a one and a quarter length win over Nash. Uh, Nash, a horse that I was pumping up big time along with Mystic Dan in January. And then I got off that train promptly. Third place at the Jeff Ruby, sitting in fifth most of the race, closing to third, just barely behind West Saratoga. Um, who was in second and four lengths behind endlessly, who was your first place winner in that one. Uh, sees the gray, very interesting ad here. Maybe they're thinking that not going to be as tired, only running a mile versus a mile and a quarter that the Derby horses ran in. Um, but yeah, Jamie Torres getting them out here again on sees the gray. Just steel. No to Jackie change here. Joel Rosario, uh, just steel horse that I really like going into the Derby. And he finished 17th, killing me. Was in second most of the race and then started baiting at the one-mile mark. Oh, Just Steel. When I saw you getting out in front with Track Phantom and Fierceness, I thought this, this might end poorly. Unless he can close that. And then he didn't. And then he didn't. Uh, looked much better in the Arkansas Derby. Second place behind Muth was following Muth in for that second place finish. Looked pretty strong. Um, two lengths off there, but looked pretty strong down the stretch. I was definitely building up that race. Here's what I don't get about Just Steel. Dwayne Lucas, I know he knows better than me, but from what I saw from Just Steel at the Rebel, seventh place after a bad start and three weeks rest, he's going to bring Just Steel off the Derby, 10 furlongs, two weeks rest, and put him in here and hope for a better result. Oh, I just don't see it. I know this is a workhorse. 12 races for a three-year-old, that's, 
pretty astronomical for one that is racing in G1s and G2s. But yeah, I, I don't see the, the turnaround being a very favorable one here for Just Steel. Getting close to the end here. We're going to Tuscan Gold. Tuscan Gold, probably the least used horse, I guess you could say. I think uh, three races, most notably the third place finish at the Louisiana Derby, uh, closing, holding a position and finishing two lengths behind uh, catching freedom in that one was part of the pack that was uh, closing from behind. Broke his maiden before that, but you know we're we're talking about a, a very fresh, very unknown horse here, uh, for the most part in Tuscan Gold. All we really know is the Louisiana Derby and what he was building up to. It is the 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 second chat, as some has said, have said. Uh, yeah, Tuscan Gold. Imagination, the second Baffert. Um, yeah. Imagination. Second at the Santa Anita Derby, losing a stronghold in that one by a neck. Second place pretty much the whole way. First at San Felipe, San Felipe, San Felipe, whatever you want to say. Going eight and a half furlongs in that one in a four horse race. Um, yeah, second in a five horse race coming from behind Maynum in that one. Yeah, Frank Dettori on this one. Bob Baffert, Imagination. Looks strong. I'm looking at that Santa Anita Derby. I really like Stronghold. And if you like Stronghold, you got to like Imagination because he was right there um, breathing down Stronghold's neck. So what do we got here? I think we're at the end. Where am I going with this? Yeah, I'm I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going Baffert value and Baffert safe play. I just think the rest... The rest for these horses, Muth and Imagination sets up nicely here. Um, I think Imagination at six to one. I wasn't going to make him my value play, but at six to one, he's more favorable than I expected before we knew what the morning line was. Is that going to change closer to post time? I think so. But there's there's catching freedom out there. There's Mystic Dan. A lot of these horses are going to take some money. It's not going to be just Imagination. And of course, he's the second Baffert, so Muth is going to take most of the Baffert fan money. After him, Tuscan Gold and Uncle Heavy. Yeah, I'm Tuscan Gold makes sense to a lot of people. I think Uncle Uncle Heavy is a bit of a reach here. He is a, a closer. He's one that I'm thinking maybe finishes a second or third uh, for that trifecta. So if you're going to key, you've got to key Muth. Muth is going to be in the conversation. I got to believe. But I also like Imagination, Tuscan Gold, Uncle Heavy. As you can see, I am fading the Kentucky Derby Day horses across the board here. And essentially saying, give me the freshes, the, the fresh outs, the, the freshies. I think that's what I was trying to say there. Um, I'm going with that. We saw what happened to Mage last year. Maybe we got some stronger horses this year that can um, withstand that two-week turnaround. But um, I don't feel that way about Mystic Dan. I don't feel that way about Just Steel. Catching free, yeah, Mystic Dan, if it rains, maybe I pull him in. Um but Catching Freedom is probably the only one that I had some pause about. I, I thought about removing one of these horses on the bottom, one of the bottom two, and thinking, okay, Catching Freedom, he's a bit of a closer. He could pull it out at the end, but nine and a half furlongs is a lot to ask at this point. So what do you guys have? Do you agree with me? Um, do you like my surroundings? It's a little bit bright behind me, a little overcast, sun shining through. But I'm having a good time talking about Preakness with you, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this one. Ciao.